Hello everyone and welcome to some of the things I have done to SLS, NASA's Space Launch System, in Kerbal Space Program over the past couple of years. Uh, this is in honor of SLS's launch, finally. And we begin with uh, the unfortunate uh, use of Starship as the core of SLS. Starship being SpaceX's uh, spacecraft in development. It has six Raptor engines at the bottom, three sea level, three vacuum. This is an old model of Starship that I've improved upon since this video was created. This is from a while back and we're going in basically chronological order through my videos and you can see it doesn't have the front end, the conical uh, front that Starship would have. It is Starship's tanks alone with the six engines but I, this is basically in response to the fact that, and those boosters are probably released a little bit early, but in response to people posting images of Starship being at the top of the SLS stack, I just wanted to make the point that actually it's a drop-in replacement for the core. It's that big. Uh, putting it on the top, well, we'll see that later, actually. I decided to broach that subject again later on, but uh, we can make it to orbit with the EUS, the upper stage for SLS Block 1B just fine. Here is the next development, the Shuttle Mouse, the infamous Shuttle Mouse. This was in order to bring back the core engines of SLS, the Space Shuttle main engines or RS-25s uh, that power the core. And they are very expensive engines, so we would want to bring them back. And so I developed these cute little things to attach to the side of SLS, two of them, uh, each carrying two engines. They eventually were aerodynamically okay, uh, not great, they have to land at really high speeds, but it took a while to get them to that point. Uh, here they are on SLS. I don't believe SLS would structurally need any great changes in order to accommodate them, uh, because the thrust does go at the bottom there, they just have to attach to basically the same location. And they do have to get really close to orbit, there's a little bit of problem with the staging there. Uh, because they don't have that much propellant and in order to control their descent they need to be close to orbit in order to make sure to get back to the United States, whether it's Edwards or Cape Canaveral or somewhere else. And so here they go and I believe this was an early test of the re-entry and so it's not going to be successful mainly due to overheating. Oddly enough I think it was the engines that were most prone to overheating uh, which you would not normally expect but yes, here we we had something go off there. I think it was something aerodynamic. But yeah, that attempt did not work out. And a subsequent attempt, you can see the engines overheating there. So a lot of work uh, went into the little shuttle mice. And their landing speed is really high. You might notice that we don't have the audio from the game. And that is because these are very old videos and the only version I have of them is with my voice baked into the audio track. So if I want to talk over it, we can't have that audio, unfortunately. Next development, Flyback Raptor Boosters. These were boosters with six Raptor engines uh, in them, and so they are methane oxygen boosters. And I made them nice and streamlined, but ultimately I wasn't very satisfied with them. And so I didn't really do much with that idea. Next up was the infamous putting Starship on top, and I had to concede that technically, if you underfuel the Starship, you could put it on top of the SLS stack. Uh, again, as with the Raptor flyback boosters, uh, not my favorite idea, but in this case, it's even worse than the Raptor flyback boosters. But yes, it can get to orbit, and it can carry a payload to orbit. I just wouldn't really recommend it. So anyway, here they go. And there it is, finally achieving... Well, I think it was suborbital a little bit, but that really depends on our payload and some of the masses. And uh, this is another bad idea. But again, the Starship is sort of a drop-in replacement for the core, so you could do it this way too. Uh, if you really wanted to keep the nose and the fairing and skip any other upper stage. Yeah, still releasing those a little bit early there. But yes, I, I have done... Everything. I'm sure I'm missing some things. I only got all these videos together by typing in SLS on my own channel, so... I don't think I captured all the experiments I did on Twitch livestreams, for instance. Anyway, here we have the infamous Unix boosters, or Raptor 9 boosters. These are recovering the boosters in a more Falcon 9 style with the boost back and return to launch site, 
with nine Raptor engines at the bottom, so this uh, somewhat preferable compared to the Raptor flyback boosters, which were difficult to manage. And there we go, we have reserved the fuel in them for the return. I did test the return, but I didn't have it in this particular video. I don't know which video I might have had the return testing in. So I'll have to hunt for that. But anyway, we did test the return, and I think I did it during a live stream as well. So that was a viable option with uh, EUS there, reserving enough fuel for a transfer to the moon very easily with the expected payload. Next up, we have the ultimate collaborative SLS, combining the shuttle mice I talked about earlier with the Unix boosters, the Raptor 9 boosters, plus replacing the EUS upper stage with the upper stage from New Glenn, which at this point I thought would have more efficiency, but it seems like maybe it's not such a good choice. It might not be as efficient as I thought it would be with the BE3U engine. That based on what Blue Origin says they can launch to the moon with the New Glenn rocket on their website. So could be right, could not be right, who knows. But in any case, uh, we had the New Glenn upper stage here with its VE3U and the Raptor boosters, so SpaceX representation. And I sort of assumed that the little shuttle mice would be made by Sierra Nevada Corporation since they've got Dream Chaser, something like Dream Chaser will be fine there too. Yeah, well, the balance might be a little bit off because you've got a lot of weight in the tail with those uh, RS-25s that really does skew the aerodynamics quite a lot. Anyway, so that has to be taken into consideration, but anyway, we tested it and this was actually during a mission. So we were trying to get these ISR units to the moon, so yeah, that is why we had to launch in dark. We couldn't pick our time. Here we did pick our time, and this is SLS without an upper stage. And this was purpose driven. I, I needed to figure out exactly how much mass I could launch with SLS without having an upper stage. In other words, getting the coal core into orbit, particularly with a nuclear engine on the back there. You might see that engine there with the shuttle mice on the side. And we want to turn the SLS core into a spaceship of its own with the little nuclear engine using hydrogen from the hydrogen tank that was left over from the launch in order to transfer something over to the moon. And here was a completely different experiment. This was with RD-704 engines from the MAX space plane and replacing the RS-25s with those. They have the unique situation where they initially use uh, kerosene, oxygen, hydrogen, and then switch to hydrogen, oxygen fuel. I didn't actually launch this, I just discussed it. And also discussed putting RD-704s in Starship, apparently. Uh, let's not go there. Oh, oh, this is even worse. Yeah, uh, four max space planes as boosters, no. Anyway, more sensible ideas. SLS wet workshop. Uh, this was what I was leading to with the initial measurement of what SLS could manage to lower orbit without uh, upper stage. And here we have the nuclear engine at the center as well as the RS-25, so no shuttle mice. Because the shuttle mice sort of hurt the payload capacity, of course, because they're extra mass. And at the top we have a sort of an adapter and a, a Unity style module from the International Space Station. And this was so that astronauts could work through the Unity module to sort of refurbish the oxygen tank, which is the top tank of SLS, turn it into a habitat, and then the hydrogen tank would still have hydrogen that the nuclear engine could use. And so it would be a ship with the oxygen tank turned into a habitat, and the hydrogen tank being the fuel tank for the nuclear engine. And that was the idea of the wet workshop. Wet workshop means taking a fuel tank and turning it into a habitat. So here we have the shuttle mice. In this case, uh, there was a version without the shuttle mice. Uh, either way would work. You just have to make sure to remove the RS-25 somehow uh, after using it. Otherwise, the nuclear engine is burdened with the RS-25s, which can't do anything. So you have to take them off somehow. We don't want their mass hanging out with the wet workshop. But the wet workshop would have, of course, a power module up front. I forgot the solar panel on the opposite side. 
and also for station keeping it would have ion engines on that that's basically the module from the from the lunar gateway here we have the star stage 2 which is a methane oxygen recoverable upper stage and this replacing EUS as well. It needs to be methane and oxygen, not hydrogen and oxygen, because otherwise it won't fit and still be shaped like a capsule. Uh, otherwise you'd have a really, really wide fairing on top of SLS in order to accommodate a capsule that can do hydrogen and oxygen. So that is why methane and oxygen, and that does hurt the capabilities of SLS somewhat, not having the hydrogen and oxygen upper stage but it can still manage a fair payload and you'd have to watch the video on it in order to figure out what that was, I don't remember. Uh, so anyway, this is the recoverable upper stage handling that. So that way we can have all parts of SLS be recoverable theoretically. At some point I've done all of them. So here the stage is getting the payload over to the moon and bringing itself back. It had enough fuel to bring itself back and be recoverable. So we tested all of that with the parachutes and everything, and there it's coming down. So with that, we had uh, two other minor experiments just for amusement. Uh, I decided to replace the SRBs on SLS with a single Orion carrier plane. This also has nine Raptor engines on its tail, though I later replaced them with Rex engines of my own devising. And there it goes. It is recoverable in theory. I also decided to go with two of these Orion carrier planes. These uh, inspired by 2001 A Space Odyssey, incidentally. And so, yes, replacing the SRBs with those. But anyway, that covers some of the more inventive shenanigans I've done with SLS over the past couple of years. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.